Today we're going to be building a great game called Cornhole or Beanbag Toss or I'm sure there's a, quite a few other names that are out there and it's a really good family game to be playing outdoors in the spring and summertime and it is also one that you can introduce kids into woodworking and actually get the whole entire family involved with the painting and the cutting. So let's go ahead and see what materials we need. To start with, you want to go ahead and cut out your main hole to where the bean bags are going to be tossed into. I've looked at both ends. This is going to be the best end to be cutting on. And what this is, is it's going to be centered and then nine inches from the bottom. And then you'll take your compass and make a three inch radius around. So you got a six inch diameter hole that the bean bags are going to be tossed into. If you went ahead and marked out for your hole, you can go ahead and drill out a tiny hole for your starter position with your jigsaw and then just go ahead and follow your line as well as you can and you should have an almost perfectly round circle. Now it's time to cut some 2x4s. Now I've got my 2x4 set out ready to cut and usually if you go and buy a 2 foot by 4 foot sheet of plywood it's relatively close to the actual 24 inch by 48 inch. But the one thing that you want to make sure of is that it is 24 inch by 48 inch or else you will have 2x4s either too short or too long hanging off the edge of the board. So I went over here a second ago and measured and these are actually 47 and 7 eighths of an inch. So if I made it the 48 inch it would be overhanging by an eighth of an inch in either direction. So just before you start to cut measure your plywood to make sure that you're going to be cutting accurately. Now that I've got in my side 2x4s cut to the length, I need to cut the top and the bottom 2x4s. And the easy way to do it is by measuring like we did on the side to see what the actual width of the board is. And this is exactly 24 inches. Same with my second one. So the easy way to get the length of that is just by doing the 24 minus the 3 inches to make for the two 2x4s two that run all the way up from the top to the bottom. Okay, after you've made your first cut with this, you can make repeated cuts the same length by taking your 2x4, your first one, and butting it up against the edge and just drawing your line on this side. Now, if you're going to do it for the next two as well, you have to still use your first 2x4 or else your length will gradually get longer. And after that, you can see that I've got four identical length pieces. No sanding, no adjusting. That's straight from using that first 2x4 as the measurement. After you've gotten all your 2x4s cut out for all the sides, you can go ahead and assemble it two ways by of course adding glue onto all the ends butt joining them and then drilling holes in from the side or you can go ahead and use a Craig jig and that's what I'm using because I have it and it's going to hide all the drill holes and all the screws on the inside underneath the board.
Now I've gotten all my 2x4s cut, I've gotten all my pocket holes drilled, and I'm all set up ready for the assembly process. This part goes pretty quick. Um, you can, like I said, you can drill right in from the side and uh, screw everything together that way. You don't need clamps for that. When I glue up my corners, I like to have the clamps, that way nothing can shift, and the screws are mainly there just to hold everything while the glue dries. I'll put glue on the ends for the butt joints, and then I'll put glue around the rim of the 2x4s for the board to actually get set on. Wiggle it around, settle it in, and then I'll go ahead and nail it with my air nailer, but you can even use just a hammer and finishing nails. That's just what I've got, so that's what I'm using. We're at a good point right now. We're on the downhill part of this build. All we have to do now is create the four legs and drill the holes and put them in. This is where it gets tricky though, but no need to worry about it because I've came up with all the angles and everything like that so that you don't have to figure that stuff out. So this is where you gotta pay close attention. The game board at the very highest tip has to be 12 inches. And I'm making my legs so that the tip of the board is 12 inches by creating the leg total height at 11 and a half inches. After you've made your mark, you can go ahead and take your square, square up that line. Now, to get it so that your legs can pivot underneath so that you can fold the game board up, I'm just taking a quart size can and trying to get it even on both sides right here and just drawing a circle. You can probably use a spray can or something else as long as it's the it's wider than the actual two by four. And then I'll go ahead and cut that out. Now the tricky part is what angle do you have to make your bottom feet so that it all works out correctly. That angle is 15 degrees. So I'm just taking my speed square, putting it on this corner, finding the 15 right here, and making the mark. Now I'll just take the only cutting tool we've used so far, the jigsaw, and cut out these two pieces. Got both of the legs cut and I am placing them on the inside of the game board. The way to make it so that your legs can swivel and not hit this back portion, you have to have pretty close measurements so that they are as close as possible up to this top rail, but when you rotate it, it won't hit and bind up. So, the way that you do that is by taking one of your legs and from your highest point you can, you mark an inch and a half and then side to side because your uh, 2x4 is 3.5 inches, you'll mark 1 and 3 quarters of an inch so that it's centered up. After you have made your mark for the inch and a half down and inch and three quarters up, you can go ahead and put it back in the game board and take a measuring tape and measure off of this top rail two and a quarter inches and your mark should land right on that spot. Now what you can do is just take your drill and try to drill as square as possible through the two 2x4s. 
Now that I've gotten my holes drilled, I've already attached that leg. I'll just take this one, slide the carriage bolt through. If I need some assistance, I'll just grab a hammer. Tap it on. Install the washer, then the wing nut. Spin that on. And then you have your foldable leg where this is all flush. So we'll go ahead and attach these. Make sure they're tight. All right, so now you can see in the background, I've got it turned over after I've tightened up the legs. It's flipped over. Everything's bolted down. Let's go check out the height real quick. So you guys can see it. We'll grab this yardstick real quick and see how close to the 12 inches we got. And as you can see, I'm about a quarter inch shy of it being the full 12 inches, but you know, that's okay. These are recreational boards. They aren't for professional use. So now all I have to do is finish sanding them, go ahead and obviously get them painted. But these are for somebody, so I'm not going to paint them. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, the build. Go ahead and make your own. This was a very simple project with a very, very minimal amount of tools. Kids can even help out because it's just a jigsaw. Just make sure they keep their hands out of the way from underneath the board and stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed the build. If you liked it, go ahead and hit that like button and share it around on the internet. And as always, if you have not subscribed, please hit that subscription button. Everyone helps. And stay tuned for more woodworking and blacksmithing videos.